Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1091. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. In this video, we have this table here with numbers 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, all the way down to these. And these are all one group. We need to look up the first occurrence of the group number 1 and find out how many items are there. 0 to 11. In this case, there's 11. When we get down to number 2, we're going to have to look that 2 up and count how many items are in the first occurrence of this 2. In this case, it should be 5. Now, we can approach this a couple different ways. The first way is we could take the whole table and look up the row. The second is, we could take a, a cell reference, a starting position, and then from that position move down and over and a define a range. If we're looking up a row, we can use index. If we're defining a range, we can use offset. We could actually define a range with index also, but in this case, when it's a whole row, it's easier to just use index to look up the row. All right, so let's look at index first. Index. It's a lookup function. It normally looks up an item, a single item, but it can look up a whole row. The array, that's all the items to look up. So we actually have to highlight the entire range. And I'm going to hit F4 to lock it, because we're copying this down. Now, there's the array, comma. We need to give it the row and the column number. Now, normally, that's a two-way lookup, and it finds the intersection, right? But check this out. We're going to look up the row number, number one. Now. We want the first occurrence of this. So we want this one. When we get down, copying our formula down to the next row, we're looking up two. We want the first occurrence of it. So I'm going to use for row number the match function. Match will look up the relative position of an item. There's the item it's looking up, comma, within an entire range of values, F4. All right, so there's the lookup array. Now, comma. We want to look up the first, and there's lots of duplicates. Now, lookup functions can handle duplicates if you want the first one. So I'm simply going to say exact match. By saying exact match, now match will find the first one. If I, uh, so row number. Right now, if I were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, it gives me one. When I get down to two, it'll give me one, two, three, four, five, six. So it knows which row to look up, Control-Z. Now we simply need to tell it how many columns. And here's the cool thing about index. If I put a 0 here, that 0 for column numbers tells index to look up all of the columns. That's how it looks up the entire row. Remember, a row is filled with lots of columns. You can also leave columns number empty, and that instructs index to look up all of the columns. You can choose which method you want to use. I'm going to leave it empty, close parentheses. So let's just highlight this and hit the F9 key to evaluate. Sure enough, it's looking up that entire first row, Control-Z. I'm going to enter this. It'll give me an error, but I don't care. I'm going to copy it down just to see how it's working. When I copy this down here, notice, boop, match F9. 6, because the 2 is the 6 item here, Control-Z. If I highlight this whole index, remember it's looking up a row, F9. It better be looking up broop, the whole row. Now check this out. Here's something interesting. There's a bunch of zeros. When we used F9, it the formulas generally will evaluate empty cells as zeros. But we're going to slap this lookup of a row into count a, and count a will count not empty cells, and so it actually won't see those zeros. All right, so I'm going to come up here and just wrap this. Count, uh, remember, index is delivering a range of values, a whole row. It looks like it's an array. If you know anything about array formulas, that looks like an array formula error. But index spits out a range that functions can understand. So count, uh, we'll just see it as a range. We don't have to use that special keyboard shortcut for array formulas. We can just hit Enter or Control Enter, and then double click and send it down. Whoops, copy it down. All right, so we can see for 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For 2, there's 5. So what we did here is we looked up the first occurrence of the number, found the row, and counted how many items were in it. Now, offset takes a different approach. We're going to be defining a range. 
The way offset works is there's five arguments. The reference is the starting position. So I'm always going to start in the top cell right above our lookup range here. We're not going to have a lookup range. We just a starting position, F4 to lock that, because I'm copying the formula down. Now, comma, row says from that starting position, which is that set blue cell right there, C9, how many rows down do you want me to move? I'm going to use match. Look up the number 1, comma, within this whole range, Control Shift Down Arrow, F4, comma, 0, exact match. Right now, as we saw earlier, if I look up 1, it will say 1, because it's the relative position of that number 1 in this list here. Remember, for duplicates, it finds the first one. And that's exactly how many rows we need to move down from that C9. When it when we copy the formula down to the next row and it looks up 2, it'll say from that starting position, go down 6. Comma, how many columns left or right do we want to move from that starting position C9? I don't want to move, so I leave it empty. Comma, the height. It's 1. You can put a 1 in. Or if you leave that argument empty, it assumes whatever the height is from that reference, which of course is a 1 by 1 comma width 11. This range happens to always be 11, and it's not going to change. So we can hard code it in there, close parentheses. So offset is defining a range based on the starting position and how we move from that starting position. F9, you can see we get the right values there, Control Z. If I copy it down one, zip, highlight this in F9, you can see, boom, it got exactly the same values. Those zeros will totally be ignored. Now watch this. I could Control Z here, but because I've already entered the formula, I can hit Escape, and it reverts back to whatever the formula was before I put it in Edit Mode. All right, so now I can count. Uh, Control Enter. I forgot to put the parentheses, so I could uh, hit Enter again and copy this down, and it will give me the same result. For group number 87, there are 11 items. For group number 17659, there are two. Now, if this was possibly going to change, we could actually change this. If I copy and Control V, instead of 11, we might use columns and highlight the entire range, F4 to lock that. Now, why would we do this? If we ever inserted a column or deleted some columns, it would be more or less than 11. Well, what does columns do? It looks from C to M and counts how many columns, F9, Control Z. So that's a little bit more dynamic. Control Enter and copy it down. If I were to highlight and delete, even though they're getting the right answer, notice this width, F9 is the number 9, Control Z. If I were to highlight the entire offset, watch this, F9. See, it shows me 1, 2, 3, 3 empty cells for number 3, which is 1, 2, 3, Escape. But if I come over here and look at the offset, F9, it's going to include the cells outside the range, one, these ones down here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, that might not be a problem if you're never going to put anything there, but that might be a problem. So there you go. All right, uh, offset, which actually is a volatile function. That means anytime you do anything like insert a column or enter data and hit Enter, it automatically updates. So if calculating time is a concern, maybe you don't want to go with offset. Maybe you like index instead. So index offset. All right, we'll see you next video.